Hey there everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my art channel and thank you for stopping by. So I'm very, very, very excited for the painting that I'm doing today. This is a 12 by 36 inch deep canvas. And I'm doing another micro swipe today. You probably have seen this seahorse video or maybe my fish or my second seahorse. Um, so the micro swipe uses silicone oil and little plastic swipe tools to create a uh, design on a negative space background. Today, I don't know if you can tell from my little templates here, I'm doing a sea serpent and I'm so, so excited. So this is like a sea dragon Loch Ness monster inspired. So this will be the head here over on the left, which will look actually kind of similar to the seahorse head. And then there will be two humps and a tail which I've drawn here because I don't, I didn't know if there would be enough space for tape here. So I've drawn this and this will be the last piece that I add after I add these three, just to make sure that I have plenty of space. And then I'm going to make some ocean for him to be swimming in, just using a palette knife and swiping across there. So my colors, I'm going to do a green leading edge for the C serpent instead of my typical navy blue. So this is a dark green, which is a mix of hooker's green and phthalo green. So that's a nice dark green and it dries darker than that. Then I have Caribbean blue, metallic teal, metallic green. Then I have this dark navy. This is what I have typically used as my leading edge color. And that'll go along in the sea serpent and it'll also go in the water. So then these are my colors for the water got metallic blue and this pale gray blue which is actually a house paint beautiful color and then metallic sea mist so I'm gonna put down my negative space my white base coat and then I will add all these colors along the edges of the blue tape and then I will swipe them out so let me just shift them out of the way oh my my leading edge green I also have in this little squeeze bottle to make it easier to apply that one. The other colors, it doesn't matter as much that you put it on super uh, precisely, but with the leading edge color, it, it does help. So then I've got this big, big bottle of white that I mixed up yesterday. Uh, all of my paint is mixed with Floetrol, American Floetrol, about one part paint to two parts flow draw and then thinned with water until it's a medium thin consistency so it's not as thin as a dutch pour but it's it flows very very well if your paint is too thick then uh, it's going to make not as many bubbles or the bubbles are not going to be as fine so you want to make sure that your paint is thin enough but at the same time not so thin that your bubbles uh, get away from you. Okay, before I finish spreading this out, I need to put on the colors and then, uh, then I'll know how far my white needs to come. Now I don't want a really, really wide band of colors because I only want the swipes to come out at most two inches from the body. Otherwise there just won't be enough space. So I wanna make sure that my, the amount of paint that I use is small enough that I don't end up with with way too much paint and way too much design. So I'm going to start with this leading edge color. So my my blue tape template what I did is I sketched an uh, an outline like a shape of what I wanted on some kitchen parchment paper and then I put blue tape on top of that and then 
flipped it around to the back where I could see it, and then cut it out with a pair of scissors. So I'm not putting the color here on the tail section yet because I want to see how these parts flow to know how far up I should make the tail go. So as you can see, this is a very narrow band of colors that I'm putting down. because the colors do not have to travel very far, so I don't want to have this huge amount of color that then I'm fighting against. So my lines are looking kind of messy here because it really doesn't matter that much. Um, only the kind of the leading edge has to be neat and the blue tape helps it to stay neat. So if you want to use squeeze bottles or something to make your paint application more precise, you can do that. I don't like the work of cleaning all the squeeze bottles. Okay. There's my colors. I'm gonna add the rest of the white all the way up to where it touches. And then I'll add a little bit more of the leading edge green color. And then I'll start swiping. Give it a quick torch to get the air bubbles out. All right, who's ready to begin swiping? Ooh, this is exciting. All right, I have, I have two sizes of swipe tools. This is a um, laminator sheet that I've just cut to sizes that I want. I think I'll be using this small one, which is about an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch, just because I'm gonna be making lots of curving lines I don't want to use anything that's too large. So make sure you've got plenty of paper towel handy to wipe it off. And then uh, I'll, I'm going to start down here and move up. Oh cool, those colors are beautiful. I went sideways. Now I'm going to start swiping kind of diagonally down as if it's the scales on the back going around. Also, I forgot to add more leading edge color, but it doesn't seem to be a problem because what I'm grabbing is still mostly this green. So I'm going to go with it and uh, see if I need to change it for the other ones.
Okay, now I'm just going to take this small bit of paper towel, get a little bit more up here along the top. Wow. This is super cool! Oh, the colors are perfect. There's, there's plenty of green, but it's also this beautiful turquoise. Oh, it's great. It's so great. Um, right here where I went sideways and then I came down with the diagonal, I gotta, I gotta cover up that a bit. If you need to do small tweaks, just a little bit of paper towel helps to do small, small tweaks. Oh, that is amazing. That, ugh. so thrilled with just that shape so far. Um, great. So because if I, you can't really see the leading edge color has kind of become covered by the other colors, but because it is the first thing down, as I pull this and swipe, that's still what ends up on top, but it's a small amount of it, which is exactly what I wanted. So I'm not going to add more leading edge. Um, okay. So for, for these, I'm going to start this way and swipe it around. First though, I got, I got a little bit of paint up in here. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna start down here. And if your edges aren't perfect as you lift up the plastic, that is totally fine because I'm going to be coming back in and making them more wispy anyway. Wow. Oh, all I can say is wow. This is, this is turning out, this is surpassing my wildest dreams. This is incredible. Um, I didn't make the colors go far enough down here because I was forgetting that uh, it needed to come at an angle. So I'm just going to fill that in a bit. And uh, the, the water is going to come up and overlap this somewhat but I just want to have some color there. Amazing. And uh, I'm going to quickly add just a little bit more color down here so that I can swipe across there. Okay. This is spectacular. I wish I could give you a close up. The bubbles are amazing. You will get the close up at the end. Okay, next hump, and then I'll add the tail. I'm not used to swiping away from myself. Usually I just swipe to the side and it's very easy to control when I pick it up. Some white paint splattered here on the tape, and my uh, swipe tool is picking it up and dragging it in. That's okay though, because I can I can touch that up with a brush afterwards if I don't like it. This color blend is absolutely spectacular. It is the perfect mix of green and blue and turquoise and metallic, and I just love it. Okay, so I am going to add my tail here. I'm gonna make it slightly, slightly to the side of where I had
Okay, I gotta put white base here around this edge, but I'm not gonna put it on this side so I don't grab it while I'm swiping. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to swipe my tail because the rest of it has uh, has curved downwards, but I kind of want this to curve upwards. So I think I'm going to do it kind of sideways going up and hope that doesn't look too weird. Okay, so the tail was getting too thick, so I scooped some of it up. Um, I'm going to add some more white back to it and try to make the tail thinner. Here we go. Got some curl to it just by blowing the swipe down over. Excellent. I have such a giant stack of <laughs> messy, painty paper towels. Let me throw these away, and then I will pull up the tape and add the rest of the base coat. Alright, this is looking great. Before I put the rest of the base coat down, I need to just clean up my edges by wiping it. Okay, there's my edges cleaned up, and now I will add the rest of the base coat. So as you're bringing the base coat up, you want to just, just barely touch it up against your design. You want to make sure not to push a large quantity of paint right up against it or it'll distort your edge. Now again, I'm going to be touching up this edge with a brush once it's dry, so a little bit of distortion is okay. But be as gentle as you can. Okay, so I've got base coat on everything. It's all torched. Bubbles are, you know, the bubbles are out of the paint. So now what I need to do is I'm going to take just a little palette knife and I'm going to start adding some wisps to this to make it look more flowing and kind of wild.
Okay, I'm dipping my palette knife into this green front edge color so that I can add some darker kind of spikes up here at the top. Just make sure you wipe it off each time before you put it back in. Okay, those wisps look wonderful. Let me tweak the, the shape of the nose here. There we go. Perfect. Okay, the sea serpent is done and it looks amazing. Obviously, I will need to add an eye in here once it is, once it is dry. But right now I can move to stage two, which is adding the water down here. So for that, I'm just going to take these uh, blue colors of the water and just drizzle some on and then I will swipe it with a palette knife. You want your colors to sort of cross over each other. Okay, so I've got a nice mix of colors here. Now, because this is a deep canvas, I really want to make sure that this edge gets covered. So before I actually make my water, I'm going to just swipe down so that the paint starts flowing over this edge. And then I will add more of the colored paint to actually swipe the water part. Just want to make sure that this bottom edge does not get neglected because sometimes that happens. And now I'm going to add a little bit more of each color and then I will swipe the actual top surface. I'm going to use this small palette knife and I may come back for a second pass. So this is like, it's just, it's not a huge one. Okay, here we go. Wow, those bubbles are very pretty. So I had a lot of paint up here on the top edge and it kind of got smeared. So I'm gonna be adding some details, probably just with paper towel here. So I'll just, I'm gonna dip this into the, the dark navy. So it starts out with some dark. just add kind of a swoop to break up break up some of that line that I had and another one I like that I like that navy color
Okay, um, I'm going to make one more pass just to add a little bit more kind of up and down. Here on the bottom, I'm going to add just a touch more of this dark navy because I love the way it looks. There we go. Nice. Except for this area. This area went weird. The great thing about using silicone is that you can just kind of swipe a bit of paper towel through it and it makes this beautiful... It, it hides imperfections very, very well. Okay, so the last thing I'm doing is I'm just taking little bits of paper towel and I'm touching up the edges, which you can't see, but it's very important for the edges to look like a continuation of the top surface. Okay, haha! -ha! The edges are all covered. I love the way this water looks. I don't think there's any more tweaks that I need to do. The dragon is perfect. Let me give you a close-up. Alright, here we go. Sea Serpent. So here's his head. Look at those bubbles. I love how a micro swipe makes beautiful bubbles, but a very controlled design. Oh, such a pretty color blend. And all of the wisps making it look like water flowing off of his back. And there's the tail. And then here's the water. Look how beautiful that is. Gorgeous little cells there. I love using a silicone and a palette knife to make beautiful water. There's the prettiest section of the water. And then the edge turned out very cool as well. So you definitely want the water to continue along the edge. All right, so when this is dry, I will show you how I touch up any edges and add the eye spot. So I will see you then. Okay, I'm back. The painting is dry. Look how the metallic shimmers. It's so cool. Love that. So now it's time for the brush touch-ups where all the little areas that are a little bit uneven, I can fix those. So there's some areas here along the inside of the humps and along the front of the neck and the face that I want to even out a little bit. That's what I'm going to start with uh, before I add the eye spot. So I'm going to turn this so you'll be looking at it sideways, but it'll also be a little bit closer up than if you could see the entire thing. So I have my green leading edge color here. I also have some of the white base paint and you can come in and get areas that have strayed too far instead of just filling it all in with color sometimes you can cover it up with the base coat instead
Okay, I think that's pretty much got the head. So I will scoot this a little bit so that you can see me working on this next hump here. Okay, so I've gotten the touch-ups done along the, the um, sort of the edges, either with the dark green or with the white background, cleaning up some of the wisps that had come up. So now it's time to add the eye. So I'm looking at the face here, and there is a stripe of this dark navy that's back here that kind of runs through, and I want to use that stripe almost as the dragon's eyebrow slash eye socket. So the first step is to get more of that navy paint and just continue that line so I'm trying to figure out how to make the eye the right size because I do think the eye will be a focal point. And actually, I don't like the shape of how this is coming on the top. I don't like the sort of the top angle that I had. Oh, that's looking much better already. Instead of doing a straight line, I want it to kind of go and then then come downwards. Anytime you're creating one of these for the first time and you don't really have a reference of what to look at, it'll be hard to know if you're doing it right. And you just have to feel it out. I was wanting to have kind of a longer pointier eye socket but every time I try it it doesn't it doesn't look right and right now it's looking good so I think I'm going to quit while I'm ahead and keep it that shape okay so now it's time to add the white so it's going to be like a circle that's, you know, kind of squeezed by the eyelids. So it won't be a perfect circle, but the, uh, the curvature will be circular. Okay, I can't tell how I like that. I, I have to look at it a bit more from different angles and see if there's anything that I want to change. But if I don't change anything, then I will show you the close-up when it's dry. Okay, so I finished the eye. It's actually still wet a little bit, but I just slightly tweaked the shape of it, brought down the front top corner, and I think that looks really, really good. So let me just show you some of the other touch-ups I did. Uh, these sort of spikes I darkened just a little bit. And then the front edge of the sea dragon, as well as 
the inside of these um, humps I smoothed out just so that they look a little bit more uh, clean and less distracting. Smoothed out the tail just a little bit. I liked the wavy um, pattern on the tail, but I did smooth it out just a little bit. So those are the brush touch-ups that I did, but look, look how shiny those metallics are. I love the metallic green and teal in the dragon. And then here in the water, we have the metallic sea mist, metallic blue, and metallic teal. So there's just lots of fun metallics, which will be even more beautiful when the varnish is on in a few weeks. But yeah, it is all finished, and I absolutely love it. It turned out just as good, if not better, than I was hoping. Thank you so much for watching this Sea Serpent Micro Swipe tutorial. I hope you'll come back to my channel and check out some of my other videos. Be sure to check out my ocean-inspired art playlist if you want to see more micro swipes and more water-themed paintings. Thanks so much for joining me for this one, and I will see you for the next video. Bye!